Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. So for today's uh, session, we are going to do on locus attack. And this particular topic uh, is not confined only for NABARD exam. It can also be uh, re uh, relevant for other agriculture exams, right? So it can also be uh, in a form of an uh, current affairs or it can be from a static portion if you're going to look into the agriculture portion, right? So this locus will uh, attack will definitely come under the plant protection, right? Under entomology. So. Um, Today we are going to look more into detail about this locust and its attacks and effects and its impact on the agriculture and food security as well as what other relationship between uh, locust attack and climate change and what measures can also be taken. Uh, and some of the attacks uh, we're just going to have a regular updates discuss the updates about uh, the attack on India as well, okay? So my name is Hansa Nora Sangma and I've been your mentor for your NABARD exam and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture and I've also uh, done my master's in nematology and agriculture. So before uh, moving forward, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, right? And you can also press the bell icon um, and for further, for further notifications and if you've liked the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well right guys so uh, let's start with our session okay so now first and foremost we need to understand what these locusts are okay so there are a couple of times that when we get confused with grasshoppers okay so this locust it is a species uh, it is a this particular uh, locust that we're looking into it is known as a desert locust okay this is not just there are different species of locusts as well but today we are going to talk about the desert locust which is the one which has been creating a lot of problems okay so uh, its scientific name is Schistocera gregoria okay so as i've given i've written here right and so th remember this grasshoppers uh, these are mostly uh, solitary creatures okay but this locus what makes it different from the grasshoppers is that they increase in number due to their change in their behavior and appearance as well as in their habits okay so that's the thing that you need to remember about this locus so don't get confused with grasshoppers as well okay so first thing foremost uh, this desert locust is one of the most dangerous okay of the locust pests because uh the why is it more dangerous because they have the ability of swarms okay swarms is a group of locusts we call them swarms they have the ability to fly rapidly across the great distances okay so uh, say, suppose in a year they can create for about five generations when we say five generations they can complete their life cycles five times okay um and what happens here is that these uh, desert locusts is also a kind of grasshoppers, right? But uh, this uh, they usually live in a total of about three to five months. So the life cycle of these grasshoppers or this desert locust is for three to five months. It is a variable, okay? And this is also variable in terms of weather as well as ecological conditions. So weather and the climate change, everything has a great impact on how long it uh, stays or how long it lives as well as for the generations of how many times it can create, right? So this is something about the local introductory about this locus and First and foremost, we need to understand that this life cycle of the locust, there are the three stages. The first one is egg, okay, and the second one is a hopper, which is the nymph stage, which is the adult stage, if you're going to look at in, a, in simpler terms, and we have an adult. So an egg, usually they hatch in about two weeks, okay, and it can also vary from 10 to 65 days as well. And hoppers, on the other hand, they live for about five to six stages, right? And this five to six stages is between those 30 to 40 days, right? So now we're moving into adult. Once it forms an adult, it can live for about two to four months, all right? So this is something about um, this locus. Let's move on to another slide. Here, this locus says that there are basically of two phases, okay? We have solitary phase, we have a solitary phase. And we have gregarious phase. So this solitary phase, if we're going to look at, these are uh, phase when these insects, they are usually safe, okay? So they do not cause any 
huge harm or they do not cause any harm. But once they form into this gregarious phase, then what happens is that these insects or these locusts, they become very dangerous. All right. So the solitary phase are uh, usually when they are in a lower number. And so in that way, they do not pose a major economic threat to the agriculture as well. So the main difference between this is that, let me just uh, explain it to you, is that uh, the first thing is that and they become dangerous only when the population builds up rapidly. So in that form, they transition to form a rigorous phase, right? So, so what happens is that when there is a close contact in the crowded conditions, they trigger this behavioral changes in this locus and once they have these behavioral changes they enter this rigorous phase so what happens is that they group themselves into bands and they form a swarms a group of huge number of locuses okay so and this rigorous phase what happens is that they have this ability to travel great distances say about 150 kilometer daily that's a huge number of uh, distance right so they can also on the way they can also eat up every bit of vegetation on the way and they can just completely um, destroy all the crops on the way so what but what happens is that if we control at the right time then these swarms insect swarms can threaten the food security of the countries at a huge scale and that is what we're facing right now in our country as well right so uh, these grasshoppers uh, when they have these suitable conditions of drought they followed by the rapid vegetation growth right so when the uh, when the rapid vegetation growth is there due to rainfall or heavy rainfall okay due to climate patterns or climate change then what happens is that they they have this uh, serotonin okay this is a hormone which is in their brain it triggers a set of changes in them okay and so what happens is that once it triggers the changes they start to breed more abundantly they start to uh, it means that they start, start to breed more okay and once they start to breed more they become rigorous and nomadic so these are when we say gregorious or nomadic it means that they become migratory so they do not confine themselves to one area so they start moving and they become migratory and move towards different areas of the countries right and then what happens the population also is very high when and they travel they become migratory when the population is dense enough okay so i hope this is clear about the solitary phase and the rigorous phase now moving on we're going to look into some of the basic things or the basic facts about this different locus okay so as we have already uh, covered that they usually lead a very shy solitary lives okay so it means that they're very shy and then they do not uh, go in a very group form but when they get crowded they become rigorous many beasts and so what happens after that the color changes from brown to pink okay so at that point it is immature when it is brown to pink it means that it is immature and yellow the color yellow is mature the question can also come from here as well so uh, they can also uh, say what is the color of the desert locust when it is mature or immature so uh, by studying this you'll be able to know that mature it gives a, a yellow color but immature it has a brown to pink color okay so uh, a swarm can be of a size of a paris or a new york so that is a huge area right so and another one is that this 40 million eat the same amount of people as 3 million people okay so they have the ability of eating the same amount of uh, of 3 million people what a 3 million people would eat okay and these crops are, are normally destroyed and they're threatened so these facts are usually ta are taken from the un food and organization uh food and uh, agriculture organization right okay so why are they deadly the question comes here right so what happens here is that the food that they eat they they can eat a lot of food okay if you're going to look in that way they can eat a lot of food they eat equal to their body weight every day okay so so that is a huge amount that they eat right they're very voracious eaters and then uh, basically um, just three breeding seasons they can increase their population size to about 16,000 times 
Okay, so one breeding is when the male and the female mate and they produce babies of this locust, then that is what a one breeding season would be, okay? And so on in this three consecutive three breeding seasons, they can increase their population about 16,000 times. That is a huge number. And their biological makeup has also very strong radars for this moisture and greenery so wherever there's greenery at this time then these they have the strong radar so they get go to those greener areas and where there is high moisture all right and so these become the uh, they are one thing is that they become very highly adaptive they can uh, be very adaptive to any circumstances or any situation uh, it's adaptive to any kind of vegetation or environmental conditions as well. And their change in their behavior, these are mostly according to the weather and the regions as well. Okay. And as we've already discussed, they, they fly up to 150 kilometers per day with the, along with the uh, prevailing winds. Okay. So these migration, they follow the path of the prevailing winds. And some of these uh, crops, these have... Um, the these swarms they devour uh, from leaves, they do, from flowers, from fruits, from seeds, growing points, and also they destroy uh, the plants by the sheet weight, and they also destroy in a massive number. So it means that they can completely destroy the whole crop. They eat everything from the whole crop, starting from the leaves till the fruits till all the growing points, right? And some of the major crops which are impacted. Or which are impacted by these locusts are these millets, rice. If you don't have a, a notepad, try to uh, take a notepad and you can pause the video and you can write it down. So I'm just going to dictate, uh, tell you guys what the important uh, of crops are which they attack the most. Okay, so they attack these uh, millets, rice, maize, sorghum, sugarcane, uh, barley, cotton, and they also attack the fruit trees as well as the vegetables, okay? And they also attack these pines and other ranged and grasses as well. So if you're going to look at it, then they do, they do not have any uh, this one any any specific uh, host right so they have a, a wide range of hosts right so in that way these locusts are very deadly because they have the ability to destroy the crop very much and now let us look more into this that these uh, so now let us look into which of the countries are affected. So according to this FAO, right, of the United Nations, they have we have three hotspots for the threatening locust activity. All right, and these three uh, nations or these three air, uh, hotspots, these are called as extremely alarming. Okay, the first one is like uh, the Horn of Africa. So in the Horn of Africa, uh, we in the Horn of Africa we usually have this. Uh, this is most that is the most widely affected or the worst affected by these locusts okay and they have uh, tremendous they have caused a tremendous uh, threat to the food security as well as the livelihoods of the people as well so this locust swarms in uh, africa from utopia or even the somalia they have traveled to south kenya and other four countries in the continent as well so if we're going to look into the, the red sea area so these uh these are really confined to the saudi arabia and oman and yemen as well okay and if you're going to look into southeast asia they have caused a huge damage in iran pakistan as well as india so and the reason recently this pakistan and somalia they have been um, declared as a locust emergency as well so if you don't know about it you can also jot it down okay so these are the countries which are mostly affected affected by the um the locust attack but this desert locust right and now let us look into the uh, locust attack in India, okay? So first thing foremost, this locust attack has been very prevalent in India as well. So India has also suffered a lot of great uh, losses in the past due to this locust invasion, okay, over these years. So uh, this locust attack, that we have had uh, 25 locust plagues and upsurges which were recorded between the year of 1964 to 1997. 
Okay, so we already had 25 locust plagues, plagues before. And this Indian agriculture, as we've already talked, they are highly prone to desert locusts, right? So this, uh, usually these desert locusts swarms, they enter the uh, desert area of India, okay, through the western side, through Pakistan for summer breeding in the month of June and July, right? So when uh, they come during those time with the advent of right before the monsoon season, right and this uh, desert locusts mostly they actually uh, the ones that attack India is they that they originate from East Africa and Sudan and so what happens is that they travel they become gregarious right so they travel in swarms across Saudi Arabia and Iran and then to Pakistan and they reach India okay so these bigger swarms once uh, they break into smaller, smaller swarms and they affect different parts of the country. So once the bigger swarm will come as a whole to the country and then after that they will break into smaller swarms and they will uh, they will go about to different parts of the country and they will affect the other states as well. The incursion of this locust and the spring swarm they have been reported uh, if you compare it to the previous years or the previous reports, then this year they have they came a much earlier. Okay, so and the reason that they said was that it was because of the residual population of locusts in Pakistan, which was from uh, which was actually uncontrolled from the uh, previous season. Okay, from the last season of this locust and this uh, swarms of this desert locust. They first has been spreading. They came through Pakistan, uh, through uh, India, right through the desert region from uh, Rajasthan and then they moved towards the Pradesh and then they kept on destroying the crops and the pastures right and then um, so if you're going to talk about where it has affected which of the states it has been affected is that it is uh, about 90,000 hectares of land has been affected in Rajasthan okay so they said that it's about 16 out of 33 districts but I, I think around 20 districts have already been affected by this locus as well and so and the numbers are also still increasing, right? So the numbers of the districts that has been affected, these, these are still increasing. And so now, uh, even in Ma, even in Madhya Pradesh as well, the uh, the state the the locusts have entered through the Nimuch district in this uh, in this Madhya Pradesh, okay? And so they have traveled to the parts of this Malwa, Nirmar, and they were also moved towards. Bhopal, right? And also in some uh, parts or districts of uh, Haryana has also been included in it as like Sirsa, Hisar, Birwana, Charki, uh, Dardri, <coughs> Dardri and Rewari, they are also, they have also been affected by this locusts, okay? So uh, other than that, uh, states like uh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Maharashtra, they have also been affected and Delhi, Himachal Pradesh and uh, Punjab, Bihar, they are also on high alert and we have already seen that they've already come towards the uh, Gurgaon side, southern Delhi as well. So uh, they've already been uh, affected a lot of, they've already reached a lot of states, right? And the country's food security is also on a very high risk at the moment. And some of the things that we need to remember here is that this, due to this locust plague, which was in 1926 and 1932, which was in India. So at that time, there was no partition, India didn't get any independence, right? So at that time, the British government, they started to have a research on this desert locust as to, uh, to know more about this uh, locust because there was a huge plague uh, in India. So, so this, locust plague of 1926 and 1932 they led to an establishment of this locust warning organization lwo okay it was established in the year of 1939 okay so but at that time the station was in karachi because there was uh, the india and pakistan they weren't div undiv uh, they weren't undivided at that time right so this uh, so the station for this was in karachi Okay, so the main job for this, um, for this ILO, sorry, for this locust warning organization is that to keep an eye on the uh, specific subspecies of this insect, especially the desert locust, right? So which was, um, uh, which was 
affecting the Thar Desert, which is in Rajasthan. So after the independence, this uh, India they also uh, established its own center in Jodhpur, which is in Rajasthan, right, as a part of the Directorate of Plant Protection, Quarantine and Storage under the Ministry of Agriculture. So um, this LWO was established in India differently or had a center at Jodhpur, okay? So uh, this question, this uh, slide is also very important for the exam point of view as they can also ask you guys about the, uh, uh, it's where the center for this locust warning organization is, is located. So your answer would be in Jodhpur, Rajasthan, okay? So this is a very important and when was, when was it first established? It was first established in 1939, which was during this undivided India, okay? So this slide is very important. Jot it down if you guys have a notepad beside you, right? And now let us move on to uh, how this swarm of its locust attack is related to this climate change. Okay, so uh, what happens here is that uh, basically there were uh, two meteorological drivers, uh, which, as the researchers said, that which were behind this current locust attack, which is going on in India. So the first one is that the unseasonal heavy rains, right? So these unseasonal heavy rains are the main spring breeding tract of the Arabian peninsula in the March and April because of its unseasonal heavy rains there were higher chances of them breeding more and in that way the population also increased. So then the second one is that the strong westerly winds which was from the Arabian peninsula to India. So according to this uh, meteorologist what happened a different pattern of warning uh, of warming in the Indian Ocean may be the trigger. So uh, if you actually look in the last year one of the strongest positive dipole in India neighborhood which brought a difference of about two degrees in the temperature of the western and uh, eastern India. So when we're going to talk about this uh, positive uh, Indian Ocean dipole, it means it refers to the uh, increase in the temperature uh, in the western Indian Ocean towards as compared to the eastern Indian Ocean, okay? And due to this climate change, these anomalies in the um, climate ocean dipole, they're increasing, okay? And as they are increasing, right? So the mountain pattern also, they also started increasing and the intensity as well of these rains and as well as we started having, looking more into the cyclonic storms are also um, have been on, undergoing a lot of changes, right? And we have seen a lot of cyclonic storms as well, right? And so this locust attack is just a kind of like a manifestation of this change in this um, ocean, in the ocean dipole, right? And so due to this, in last year, if you actually look, the, the, the monsoon season has actually started a week ahead, like say about two months, two months ahead in the Western India. So in, and it started uh, earlier and it lasted till November. Right, so usually normally they last till September or October cycle, but they lasted longer. And this extended rain, they created a more of a breeding condition, right? So moisture, remember moisture and breeding condition, moisture and uh, moisture add, actually adds to the breeding uh, conditions. Uh, it's like a more favorable condition for the breeding of this locust and they also produce natural vegetation on which these locusts feed. So in that way, the, the, there is an increase in the swarms and there's an increase in the population of these locusts. So we're going to look at uh, this uh, cyclonic storms of this Mekunu and Luban, which was struck in Oman and Yemen, uh, which was in last year. So this, uh, because of the cyclonic activity which happened last year, there was a heavy rain, right? And due to this heavy rain, it transformed the desert tracks into a larger lake where the locust swarms they can breed. So they need moisture for breeding, and in that way, so they needed this. Uh, so this uh, cyclonic activity also accelerated the uh, increase in the population as well as in the breeding, okay? So, um, 
we're going to talk about uh, the recent cyclone Ampan as well. So their movement have also been aided by these westerly winds, which was actually strengthened by the low pressure area created by the cyclone Ampan in the Bay of Bengal. So due to this wind, which was aided by the westerly winds, as the locusts, these are also passive flyers and they generally flow, uh, follow the wind, right? So they have been followed by the, they have been aided by these westerly winds. So this is also one of the, uh, this is how this uh, climate change and uh, the locus attack is related, right? And now let us look into some of the impacts of this locus attack. The first and foremost is an effect, they affect the food security. The second one is they affect the farmers. And number third is they affect the urban areas. Okay, the so first thing, they have, how do they affect the food security? So if the breeding is in the same uh, context with the along or at the same time along with the curry crop, then it would have a detrimental effect on the rice, maize and sorghum. So this FAO, they also have warned the locust attack would lead to a major food security as um, you know, if the locusts, they, if they attack all these curry crops that has been growing, all these crops that has been growing in all these major agriculture um, states of India, then they will not, it is a huge threat to the food security as well. And number second here is that the effective farmer. So this means that this locust, they not only devour this valuable uh, crops which are been grown by these farmers, but they can also devastate the livelihoods of these farmers and associated, they also will uh, affect with the agriculture supply chain, right? So indirectly, they are gonna affect the food security as well and they are also directly going to affect the farmers if there is no standing crop left then what would the farmers sell and how will they, how will they get their natural uh, normal income their family income their day to day daily wages and it will also affect the supply chain management of this whole thing right so another one last one here is on affecting the urban areas so uh, the rubby crops have have already been harvested right so and there are no more crops in the field and the desert crop that this locusts have been invading the greener spaces in the urban area so and a lot of rubby crops since they are no longer there so they have moved towards the urban areas and though uh, these locusts they are unlikely to be a major threat in the urban areas so but they they can still disrupt in the day-to-day -day life moreover these effects of these locusts in these urban areas they may, may also aggravate these like the transportation problem may also be a, they might have a transportation problem as they might also have a transportation problem because of this national lockdown that is going on and the to this the pesticides and the labor is also difficult so in that way it is also affecting a lot of these are all intermingled and these are affecting a lot right so these are some of the impacts that a locust attack can have on India at the moment right and as well as if you're gonna look into another slide here there are certain measures okay so in certain measures what we have five points the first one is immediate measure number second is need for systemic study on the low case number third is strengthening the research framework for climate change and then fourth is strengthening the decentralization and number fifth is regional cooperation so these are five of the measures that or the way forward that they can be taken in the future to prevent this such type of the devastating effect of this locus. So the first thing, immediate effect, proactive control of the locus can also be done through spraying of these pesticides aerially by an optimum quantity of this insecticide, right? So um, they can be, all, along with that, the crops can also be monitored. Uh, they should have uh, continuous monitoring of these crops during ensuring the uh, career season as well. And the second here is that it's need for systemic study on the locusts. The Indian Council of Agriculture Research, ICAR, there have been there hasn't been much um, systemic research done on this desert locust since the 1990s and so there has to be more of the systemic study or researches going on um, on this locusts so that uh, we can have uh, better management practices right in the future as well. 
to control and to manage this locust attack. So another one here is strengthening of the research framework for climate change. So due to the emergence of these new dimensions of this climate change, uh, so India is also very important if we put more funds to predict the course of this present global environmental changes that is happening. Uh, going on, right? So we need to have more researches on this environmental change as well and to understand the sources, the consequences and to formulate a national policy and a nat national responses to these as well. So these are also another, one other point that you can do. Another one is that we can also set strengthen the uh, decentralization so there is a need to strengthen the disaster management framework at this level because that is the most important thing at a local level as well as highlighted by the 14th Com uh, finance commission right report and disaster management act of 2005 so this is very important as well and we also have this thing on the regional cooperation so there is a need for this uh for um collective regional efforts, right, by all the people, the local people as well. And these local, they are usually bred in the drier areas of the eastern of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula and they enter finally to India. So there has to be a collective regional effort of uh, these uh, corporate regional efforts to control and to measures to take up for these uh, locuses, right? So these are some of the measures that we can take, right? So they can also ask you guys on the species on about uh, the effects that it has, the symptoms of this locus uh, effect on plants. They can also ask uh, questions on the scientific names on different species of the locuses as well, about its generations, about its phases, right? So try to be prepared, try to be thorough with this topic. Uh, it can also come in different forms, right? So, and that way, uh, try to study about this topic. This is a very important topic. So I think there is a very high chances of this topic coming in some all the exams, okay? So um, that's all for today, guys. I hope this session was very for you, was useful for you all, right? And if you've liked the video, don't forget to, subs uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And you can also subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for further notifications and we'll be meeting for the next session.